Hello and welcome to Mega Brevran channel. Yes, I've got a silly hat on. It's 30 degrees out here and it's really hot. And I should be staying inside, but I just got a bit sort of bored. Um, I'm trying to think of what can I do. What can I do? Well, when it's hot, you don't really want to do anything. And there's plenty of things I need to do. But one thing I want to do is to move my van towards the garage. Unfortunately, we've got our Kangoo in the way. And I've never driven the Kangoo. I can't even drive. I drive a on Burmese, but I need to move it because then that will be in the shade and I can look at a few things I need to sort out. Uh, and at the moment, that's the electrics. So I'm going to do a video about that. First of all, move the Kangoo. Right, let's go and get in the kangoo. So, uh, unlike the uh, Grand Scenic, this comes with a, a flick knife key. So, if I come to think of it, I don't drive the. Oops, shut up, radio. I don't actually drive the scenic or move the scenic very much. I think we'll open the windows wide because it's extremely hot in here. There we go. Right. The idea is, is that we move this backwards slightly so that I can put it over there where Mega Brevan is. So yesterday I had my camera overheating and it recommended me to put it at 30 uh, frames per second at 1020 pixels across, so 1080 sorry it's been on the screen there. So hopefully the camera will not overheat as it's just done. I actually put it in the fridge just now again. So anyway, so the idea now is to get used to this without breaking anything. So. Ooh, it's quite a high biting point. Whoops. I nearly knocked you over then. I think I need to move across a little bit as I won't be able to actually get out of the car. See the hedge. I think I'll move forward a little bit. So more overheating the camera, not the car. Um, so yeah, I've moved the car forward so I can actually get out because otherwise I'll walk straight into the hedge. So now I'll move that back. I'm going to move um, Mega Bread Van forward and uh, then move it back towards the garage so I can put this in its place. So after all that rigmarole, uh, Kangoo has now moved to a place out of the way. Mega Bev Rani is in the shade. Hopefully the camera will stay in the shade because it keeps shutting off and it's getting on my nerves. Anyway, we shall we go. 
so I've tried to give myself plenty of space around the door so that I can eventually crawl on the floor because I need to look at the fuse box. So, main problems that we have are the, it's like a warning beep that sounds when you've uh, left your headlights on. Um, when you open the driver's uh, door, it, it makes noise and it hasn't made noise for some time. The turn ignition on. Horn doesn't work. Indicators work okay, but not the horn. And lastly, if you can just like see it in the gloom, this light is getting more and more damaged, as you can see. It's all cracked along the the join there. And of course now it doesn't work. So if I try to switch it on and off, it doesn't do anything. So it's three things that just don't work. So I think the next thing I need to do is to go down and look at the fuse box. Now it's somewhere under there somewhere, under the dashboard. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be there, but I'm going to try and film it the best I can with my camera. The thing is this is a small camera, it should be okay, I hope. And think about what I need to do after that. So I'm sort of lying on the passenger seat, steering wheel. And if we stick the camera under there, we can see the fuse box just about. And in fact, I've put the the screen on the front screen so I can actually see what I'm filming. So that's pretty good. So yeah, you've got the fuse box there and it's hanging from the wires, um, which isn't ideal. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I have to put into here and somehow mount the fuse box up here somewhere. I'll just move the camera out a bit more oh. so you can see. But uh, the idea is to have the fuse box so it's accessible, so to have it on this binnacle just here would be nice. But before I do that, um, I'm going to have to work out how am I going to sort into the dashboard and also if we need to sort of work on the back of the fuse box on the wiring whether I'm going to be able to join the, few, the dashboard back again properly uh, or make it so I can actually access the wiring so you have to excuse the neighbour mowing uh, I haven't got my external mic with me so basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut out this bit of the dashboard here not over here because it's not exactly straight because I've realised that I can actually move this fuse box and just about see the sort of side of it here I can move it up towards here and then find an anchor point there and also I realised that when driving it doesn't actually get in the way if it's there because you've got the steering column there accelerator brake and even with my big legs uh, it's out of the way so ideally it would be nice to have it fixed onto the bit of plastic just above this line but I've got to quit it straight first so that's going to be fun and it's also in a very awkward position because you can see it's uh, <laughs> it's not exactly easy to get to and my back is playing up as usual but I'll try and get it done and see how we go so the handy tool for the job is going to be this cutter that I bought I'll put a link up to um, the video I, I did when I first bought this because I used it to cut off the bottom of the the front dashboard um, the front dash sorry not dashboard that's the dashboard front dash on the on the van so this is a useful little thing you've got the blades in the handle there's two blades I'll just tip them out onto the seat so I'll cut myself uh, you've got one for metal uh, I guess this one I use it I use it for plastic because that's what I use for the the front dash and basically you close it and you make it move it forward. That's it, you move it forward. So you slot it in to there, you move that forward like that, and it stays in place. And then you can use that to cut. And because it's angled, it means I can get on underneath here and be able to at least cut things without cutting myself. So in the end I end up switching to the metal blade because the wooden blade has a sort of 
serrated edge that's very difficult to sort backwards and forwards you know you go one way whereas with this it's a bit easier it's a bit awkward as well because um if i just move your pair and move that a little bit closer hopefully there's enough light to, to see what i'm actually doing here so you can see the i've cut this bit out here um there's a bit of plastic that's it. So that goes in there around the steering column so it wasn't too bad it's not quite straight but sawing this end here was a bit of a pain to try to get the, the blade into to an angle because this is in the way so you're sawing you're hitting that so you're kind of do little saw marks before getting into it and that was a bit of a pain so i managed to move the few rocks around a little bit but i think that the wire is not quite long enough i mean i can i can do this for example but then i've got to try to find a way of fixing it to something um so yeah um the wire is not quite long enough and the box is a little bit too deep to go around that corner around there well, it's a start anyway so i managed to force it around i think i might have to cut out a little bit here on the right and it's, it's staying in place but it's not ideal because it's next to the it's right next to the steering column there's not much uh i can just get around you see there's not much of a gap between the steering column and the box uh i think what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take out the the fuses and see if they're clean if not uh, i might consider the idea of basically changing all the fuses in, in there there's a case of getting the right ones really so i've tried to start cleaning up the fuses so got these two out okay and it seems that the i guess the actual fuse itself you can see it through the clear holder there looks intact I don't know a thing about fuses apart from the fact that uh, if the contact's broken obviously it's shot and that one seems okay as so I can see through the little hole there but the problem is I've got those two out I've got those two out to try to get this one out in the middle and it would not budge it will not budge sorry I may not talk in the, in the past tense because uh, I haven't got it out yet so I'm struggling to get this one out so I'll go through them one by one and we'll see if that works. First of all, I managed to remove two fuses. Uh, I'll put a little picture up here somewhere or up there, um, or down there even, to show you which ones I've been playing around with. The yellow one in the middle I couldn't get out. So I got the two fuses out, and then realized that uh, uh, when I came to try to switch the engine off, obviously that was something to do with the ignition. Uh, so I took those two fuses out and uh, scared myself when I couldn't switch the engine off. It's a beginner's mistake, so I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Um, put them back in. Um, can't get them out again. And the one that was already in there, the third one, I can't get that out either. I haven't got any needle nose pliers. Um, I have no spare fuses. So I've put them back in again. Um, a friend of mine suggested using WD-40 and I tried that as well, but I couldn't get the damn things out again. So I think I can safely say that the fuse is probably, probably all, it, it could do with all replacing. Um, it might not be a bad thing. Um, if it's the fuse box itself, then that might be a bit more of a bother. But I think what I'll do is I'll take all the fuses out when I can, when I've got a, some pliers, I need to get a, a pair because I haven't got any. Um, and put a bit of WD-40 in to try to clean the contacts a bit. Uh, my friend said don't drown it, okay, um, and wait for some new fuses and replace them. But for now, I'll put the old ones back again because obviously, if I take them out and you know can't get them back in for any reason or whatever, um, I won't be able to use the van. So, watch this space. So, we're after the weekend and uh, I've ordered the the fuses and the pliers and things and I'll show you those in a minute but 
Uh, over the weekend we had a massive storm and so the driveway is now covered in pine needles and rubbish from that tree up there. So anyway we're gonna we'll get in the, the van. It's a bit strange at the moment, my, my daughter's not here, she's uh, in England. Um, I haven't got any family that I'm in touch with over there but she's uh, on a school trip. So yesterday we were taken up, well yesterday morning we were taken up with her, uh, saying goodbye to her and seeing her off. And apparently she's now safely installed near Peckham in London. So it's uh, not the first time she's been to London, only the second time, but it should be interesting to see uh, how things get on with her. So first things first, tea, and we have biscuits. Um, I've just started eating this one. That is called a Palais de Breton. Um, one of my students bought me a whole packet of these um, um, and sablés are called as well, the biscuits are thinner, uh, from Brittany, so I love those. And I have a few English shortbreads left, just a few, from my trip to England. And uh, yeah, that's it, they're gone then, because um, apart from in the southwest of France, I've not really found anywhere where I can buy bourbons, custard creams, shortbread, nice biscuits, and that sort of thing. I think uh, they sell hobnobs down there, which are equally nice. So yeah, biscuit things over. Um, so, ordered, ordered these at the end of last week. So, we've got... I'll show you this and I'll scoff my biscuits and then I'll get on to the next bit of the video. But uh, anyway, um, so I bought some... a set of pliers and... well, pliers, stroke... Uh, nail removers, I think. I think that's a nail remover, that one there, with the the head and whatever. Some rounded head and whatever. Some normal pliers and a few couple of needle nose pliers. And I think that's a, a, um, a cutter, a pounce in French. Let's have a look. I thought it's quite handy actually, it keeps more together. Yeah, so that's uh, something for cutting wire. Um, but I'm more interested in the needle-nosed pliers. So, if where things get come to the worst, I can use those to to remove the fuses if I need to. So that's that. I've got over there without knocking my tea over. And then I bought a set of fuses. Um, and there you've got the little plastic. Um, tweezers to pull out those um, so well, I'll give the plastic tweezers a try first and then I'll try the pliers if I get really desperate because I have problems trying to get the um, fuses out of here uh, at the moment I'm only working on the bottom row I've not looked at the top so I've got my trusty notebook and I'm going to try to work out by elimination what fuse does what um, I know I've got um, like a chart somewhere in the I must find a manual online for the uh, for the van, but um, it's not very clear, and I need to probably be more practical and work out what does what here, and then look at the chart and see if it corresponds. Um, so that's the idea. I'll get my notebook. I'll basically try to move each one turn the ignition see what happens now I know at the bottom row two of them one's to do with the dashboard and possibly the ignition at the same time and the other one is just purely ignition which isn't very clear to me because for some reason if I turn the ignition on and remove either one of those two fuses then I can't turn the engine off so it's, it's just very strange in my mind to have two fuses doing more or less the same thing Unless I'm wrong, there's a need for two fuses for the ignition for some reason. Um, I'm sure that somebody's probably shouting at me now, uh, stating the obvious, but I haven't got a clue. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that, see if uh, each uh, each one corresponds with something. And then after that, I'm going to clean, clean the contacts with just a tiny bit of WD-40, because a friend of mine said don't... I've said earlier in the video probably don't drown it so I do that and then I replace all of the, the fuses you can see the 
second row, basically it's the bottom row. I've removed three fuses, three twenties. Um, so two of the twenties, um, as I said, something to do with the, the dashboard, the um, ignition. Um, so there's, a, there's three of them and the one in the middle I couldn't get out. And I'll tell you why. So I know that I'll take a picture of this, but um, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up very well. Uh, as you can see, that is well and truly shot. Uh, and that's why I couldn't get it out. It was melted on both sides. Um, the wire in the middle, the fuse itself, appears to be intact, but it's looked a bit grey. So probably it's toast. I would have thought so, given that. But that explains probably why things aren't working properly. Um, at least one thing. So I've added a bit of WD-40 into the into the fuses there at the bottom. Try not to put too much in. It's dripping, so I'll probably just put too much in, and I'll probably mess things up. Well, we'll see. So I forgot to mention that uh, when I remove this this damaged uh, fuse, I had to use um, these ones, the pliers. So I tried the. The little white, um, I've got the light on the box, you can't really see it. Little white tweezer thing there I've used on the first two, but this this one here, uh, no, it's not that one, um, not one either. Has it gone? Anyway, you saw it, the one that's uh, basically toast. Um, it wouldn't work with plastic, I couldn't get it out of plastic tweezers, so I had to use these. So we just wait for that to dry, I'm going to get a bit of tissue and dry it off a bit, a bit more. And I'll fit two of these into the, the slots that uh, to do with the ignition and dashboard. And the one in the middle, the one I couldn't get out, I'm just curious to see what that does. Okay, so that's the next stage. I've replaced the two twenties, uh, and it was the one in the middle that was the, the one that had gone to toast. So I'll leave that one for now, I'm going to see what it does. Um, these two here were a bit of a big to get in, but they're, they're in and one of them, I think it was this one, I could actually hear something click in the dashboard when I, pu I pushed it in. So I don't know what it was, whether it's something to do with the, um, um, what are they called? They're not spark plugs, they are, um, en français, bouger de prix chauffage, in English, what? I'm, I'm sure I know what it is, but I just it's not in my mind at the moment anyway So yeah, I think it's this one that's probably something to do with that. So I'll give the ignition a turn see what happens uh, Yeah, that's the window wiper. We don't really want that on I guess nothing too obvious for the minute, so I better Switch it on. I'll just uh, well, I just preheated it once and There we go so I just had to go in and get my external mic because I realised that I was using the camera on the, ca the camera on the camera, the mic on the camera, and uh, obviously with the engine running, you wouldn't have been able to hear me. So hopefully you can hear me now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the functions and see if they work. No horn. Indicators working. I will have to. See if the headlights are working. The fuse that's uh, the culprit. Yeah, no headlights. And at the back, don't know whether we've got any any lights going on. No, nothing. So I safely say that the fuse there is the lights. So that's one eliminated. Going to be a long job this. So the, the one that was toast seems to have been the headlights for some reason, which is weird because they're working fine. Uh, what else wasn't working? That. No. And the horn. And this buzzer. Uh, so the buzzer's there. Well, it wasn't going to work as a headlight. Ah, probably that's, that's the problem. Probably it wasn't working properly. Because this, this here, as I probably said earlier, um, when I open the the door, or rather when I close the door, sorry, 
and the headlights are still on it's supposed to buzz but uh, there's not been a buzz so anyway we'll put the fuse back and see what happens so that was easy to put back in um let's check my mic's working yeah good um yeah uh you have to check that now and again because sometimes it switches itself off uh yeah so we'll start up and i just saw that the lights actually lit up like this no nothing there's nothing to do with it then so we'll just go and check them Well, they work fine, don't they? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the, the driver's door and see what it does, because you've got the... No, it's not going to do anything, because I've just pressed it in. Switch the ignition off. So the lights are still on. And I guess it's not that. Well, that's a shame. So I've noticed that to get to this trip switch that's behind the in the door frame, uh, you can actually get to it down there, and it's really mucky down there. Can't really see a great deal with the camera, but uh, I think a clean out's going to be needed there, and then we'll give it another try. But I won't do that at the moment. I'm just concentrating on the fuses. So I think I might have, have broken the little plastic tweezers because uh, they're not doing their job anymore. I managed to get one fuse out with them and the others it just it kept slipping. So in the end I've used uh, one of my pliers and I managed to take all of them out. The idea is, is that I'm going to probably replace this 30 one first. So that's a new one. It's really weird because when I look at this 30, I don't know whether that's normal or not, but I guess the resistance must be quite a thick thing or something. I don't know, but uh, that looks odd to me. Um, the rest of them just look a bit used. That one looks like it's intact. And the others look a bit old, basically. I don't think they've been replaced in some time. So it's probably a good job on replacing them. So I've noted everything down. So basically I took a picture of the, the fuses so I know where I am. So first of all, I'll do the 30. Or perhaps I'll do the... No, I'll do the 10 because that's on the right-hand side and it's easier to try and judge where it is. Because the position of the fuse box down there by my right knee is is not ideal. So that's the 10 put in there. That. Nothing at all. Hmm. This is not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be. So it's a 10 the ignition because dashboard lights up. I think I assume that if I come down here, I think this one is a dashboard. So number 10 must be, let's get that and put it down there, ignition. So what's this one? here so ignition switch off no idea so we'll say that's a dashboard and we'll say that's the ignition because I can't even t t turn it on so ignition on so let's try no it won't be ignition on will it because I've got 10 in already so it's not that so it's one of these. Now which one would be the ignition on? That's the problem. So I think what we'll do, we'll put the 15 in and see what that does. 15's in. So it's not that. That's the wipers, number 15. Or perhaps not. So by elimination, the 20 or 30 is the wipers. I'll probably guess that that's the ignition on 30. 
We'll try 30. Just plug in 30. No wipers. Hmm. We'll put the last one in, see what that does. So that's the last one. Starts up. So the last one was a 20. So the 20 must be the ignition. I'll just write it in there. Ignition on, because was off. So we've got 10, 15 and 30, and I've got a clue what they do. So I think the idea would be to leave the 20 in. Wipers are working. Indicators are working. Let's give that a close and see what happens. Let's put the lights on. Turn it off. No, nothing. Turn this on. So I think it's safe to say that without doing a proper elimination, uh, the problem for the horn and for the light is wire related and not fuse related. But now I've got to figure out, if I take out the other fuses and leave the 20 in, so we'll take out the 10 first and the 15 and then see what happens if I can take them out easily that is. So it looks like the putting the WD-40 in and new fuses makes it life a bit easier because I can take that out of my fingers. So that's the 10, I'll turn the ignition on, I'll probably turn the lights off because this van has a little tendency to flatten the battery with the lights on. So. Well, there's nothing on the dashboard. Wipers work. That works. So dashboard. So I've got 20 for dashboard there. There's no lights on the dashboard. So dash lights. So it's 15 and 30, let's see what they do. So I'm a little bit confused because I've taken out the 10, the red one, and I had the same problem, I couldn't switch the engine off. So I think I have to look at the chart in the manual because I'm not really sure why why it's doing that. Um, I mean, me and electronics uh, are not the best of friends. We don't We don't know each other very well. So, I mean, if I've, I've turned the ignition on there, I can start it up. And it starts up very easily. I think I can just count my blessings that I've managed to change all the fuses, WD-40 of the contacts, and everything works. Uh, because I was fearing that if I WD-40 of the contacts, that was what I was talking about earlier, really, about doing th something something really stupid. Um that I might end up damaging the fuse box and then, then we really would be in a trouble because uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to, to replace it. Um, so we'll leave it at that for now. So one thing I'll do is uh, I'll see if it drives okay because that, that would be a bit silly if I've been mucking about. So I'll just push those onto the seat a bit more. I don't want them going on the floor. My pliers. I don't feel I've closed the fuse box, uh, box, so I don't want fuses going everywhere. So we'll give it a try. That was in drive, and I didn't put it in drive, that's weird. So, that's fine. So into drive, and brake off. It's really weird because I get the impression that when I'm selecting the the drive and reverse, the it's, it's coming up quicker on the on the thing. 
on the dashboard. So, put it into reverse and we'll just reverse back slightly. I haven't got much room to, to play with. Because I, so I'll have to move that car out, well, move the Kangoo out of the way. Thing that I'll do, I don't want to end up going into that workbench. Yeah, so I'll go and look at the chart on the on the manual and see if I can understand what I'm doing. But for now, everything's working again, where well, it should do. I only changed the fuses, but I think it's probably a beneficial thing to do because uh, you've got one fuse that was melted, the other ones were a little bit old, and I think that's uh, yeah. I think that's a job job uh, well done, I think. So I've been fiddling about a bit, uh, trying to figure out what goes where. And I've got my trusty manual. Um, it was sent to me by Simon Janet on, on Twitter quite some time ago. And finally, I'm using it. So there you go, Simon. I'm using it. Great. Okay, thank you very much for that. This is really, really useful. But I'm still a bit baffled, and I'll show you why. So excuse my amateurish filming because there's no other way I can do it. I've got uh, my my wife's sewing light on so I can actually see the page. So that's what I've figured out so far. But the 30, top left, um, it's not even in the manual. There's no 30 amp fuse that I can see. But by elimination, um, I've worked out that that's roughly what they're for. So if you look sort of like bottom, the bottom row, um, middle of the three, uh, roof light, horn, headlights, indicator, fog lights. That was the one where the the fuse was a little bit melted. So the horn doesn't work. Um, the roof light doesn't work. So I'm assuming there's a wiring problem somewhere. And it's not the fuse, but the fuse has decided to, to melt. So... It must have been something pretty drastic for it to do that. Uh, what else wasn't working? The yeah, the warning system on the driver's door uh, with the trip switch. So that, I think that's top left, number 30. Um, because there's nothing else I can think it could be. Uh, I've tried everything. I've tried the indicators, wipers, lights, uh, heater... Um, what else? I think that's about it. There's not much else in there, really, to be honest. But, yeah, uh, I can't really find exactly what that is. So if we look at the um, the actual manual itself, so using this is, is completely useless because um, it doesn't even correspond to the fuses that I've got in my fuse box. You know, they're just not in the same order, and I don't know why. Uh, I mean, it's definitely the fuse box for the diesel version. That's the electric version over here. It's got my keys on top. It's not really relevant, but uh, yeah. Um, so that's not that's not quite right. So basically, by looking at what I've discovered while doing the video, um, by eliminating things a little bit, and then looking at the amperage of each thing, I've managed to work out what each thing does on my little diagram there. So I think that is about as near as damn it. So the main thing is, is that everything's working and it seems things are working slightly better through just putting new fuses in and cleaning the contacts. So let's hope that stays that way. So we've got somewhere, I suppose. Um, I should be happy, really, because, I mean, I'm sort of learning a bit more about how my van works but the next thing is going to have to be sorting out the three problems the trip switch on the on the, the front door and the interior light and the horn um, I suspect I'll probably damage the horn when I was repainting the subframe last year uh, or did something to the wires or you know just pulled on something I don't know but uh, we'll have to look at that the next job will be actually fitting a fuse box, a box around the, the actual chocolate block thing with the fuses in, because I'm causing a shadow with my camera. Hmm, that won't do, will it? Uh, 
Um, yeah, so my friend Adam's got a 3D printer. He's already 3D printed the um, armature for my camera here um, and a few other things, my lens cap, which I haven't got. Um, but he suggested that if I measure the, the chocolate block, I'll call it a chocolate block, it's probably another name for it, but the thing with the fuses in um, is a fuse box, but I mean a box around the fuse box, if you know what I mean. So he suggested if I measure that, then he'll be able to 3D print me a box to fit around it to protect everything. But before I do that, I need to figure out a way of attaching it to the dashboard before I had to sort of like crouch about on the floor or on the floor of the cab, which is not ideal. And I prefer to actually see them. Uh, and actually seeing them has helped me a hell of a lot to, to work out where everything goes in the box. So yeah, that's going to be the next thing. I'll ask Adam to, to see if he can do me a box. And I'll do a video about that another time. So with that, thank you very much for putting up with my trial and error. And I hope you've learned something about the fuse box in my van if you own a similar van. And I'll see you another time. So take care of yourselves and bye. <laughs>